The first thing you'll notice with Photoshop CS2 is that the file browser has gone. This has been replaced by a whole new application in its own right called Adobe Bridge. This program lets you work with more than just Photoshop files. It's absolutely command central for all Adobe CS2 applications. You can launch it from any CS2 application by typing command plus option plus O on Macintoshes or control plus alt plus O on PCs. And you can view and manage files from Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, and even QuickTime movies. And you can also view multi-page PDF documents. For Photoshop users, you can work with raw files right from Adobe Bridge before you pass them off to Photoshop. So there are many, many uses for Adobe Bridge in your creative workflow. Let's review some of the basic functionality and navigation controls in the Bridge program. From Photoshop, you can open Bridge in several ways. One way is to type the keyboard shortcut. That's Command Option O on Macs or Control Alt O on PCs as I said before. Two, you can click on the Go to Bridge icon on the top in the Options bar and it takes you to Adobe Bridge. By the way, to switch back, type Command Option O or Control Alt O again and it takes you back to Photoshop. And the third way is to choose File Browse. In the default layout, you'll be in the thumbnails view. You choose the folder of images that you wish to view by clicking on the folder tab in the top left panel, which is the navigation panel. It loads the thumbnails in a folder from top down, and it's pretty fast even if you have a lot of images in one folder. You can change the size of the thumbnails by dragging the slider at the very bottom. You can drag it to the right to increase the size of the thumbnails or to the left to reduce them. And this really helps you to sort and organize and to make decisions about images before opening them up in Camera Raw or Photoshop. If the top left panel deals with navigation and locating files, then the panel below it is a larger preview which shows you the file that you've selected. And it may or may not be useful if you're viewing a larger thumbnail to begin with. And if that's the case, you can drag the panel shut to hide that information. I'm dragging at this little control point right here that's marked by two or three lines. So in that sense, Adobe Bridge is very customizable and it has a very easy and intuitive interface. Below that is a panel that shows you the metadata, which is the data about the data. And if it happens to be a digital camera image that you have selected, it'll show you all kinds of information or technical information about the shot, the exposure setting, the ISO, and whether or not the flash fired. There's a ton of information here. Beyond that, you can get useful information like the size in megabytes, the bit depth, whether or not the file has a color profile embedded into it, and what kind. You can save keywords with each and every image and view them in the Keywords tab. And if you're really not interested in viewing the informational panels and would rather focus on the images in a folder, then click the double-headed arrow at the very bottom left of the image window. And it hides all the information and only shows you the images, which can be very useful at times. I'm going to click it again. Now, if you find yourself navigating to the same file or document or the same folder, consider adding it to the Favorites tab up at the very top. To do this, I'll step back one level. Right up at the top, there's a folder with an arrow pointing up that takes you back up one level. Then I'll select the entire folder of images that are accessed frequently and then choose File, Add to Favorites. And then you can select it very easily from within the Favorites tab. It's gone ahead and added it right here. You can even drag it right to the Favorites tab. It says Drag Favorites here. It's very convenient and very well defined. Now let's talk a bit about navigation. Adobe Bridge has four defined layouts or workspaces for viewing and working with images. And you choose them from the Window menu under Workspace. 
There's the light box workspace, which hides all of the panels on the left, like we saw before. And then there's the file navigator, which is the first one that I recommend you use when you're starting to learn the program. Another useful layout is the film strip focus. Let's take a look at that. I find that this is a really intuitive way to view images. In this view, we click the left or the right facing arrows below the image to advance to the next image or go back to a previous image. You can also use the left or right facing arrows on your keypad to do the same thing.